trippin' in Dior. Oh. This a double lock, don't slam my door. Yeah, yeah. Left the strip club, a lot of money on the floor. Hey. Bought my bitch a rollie and put ice around her throat. Oh. Drop top bins, parked at the corner store. Sure. Gotta have a bag just to look like this. Yeah. Look like glass on my wrist. Oh. We was moving bags of the gas in the trenches. And all of the gloss come with an extension. Yeah. All the money get to drip like this. Yeah. Ice box drip my wrist. Walk up in the club and I drip on the I was looking at people like the Gucci, Lil Wayne, the Rosses, like all the artists before me, and I'm like, shit, you need to get all this goddamn money for the show. Then you got the money that's coming from the merch, you know what I'm saying? Then you got the sales, like you got all these different revenues of money, and I was just like, shit. What if I could do the shit and I'd be all independent? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'm the artist, but it's the only CEO too, though. So I was always like, I want to see how far I can go. I want to see how far I really take this shit. How much I can be getting for a show. How much I can be really accumulating every month. How many millions I can make per month without signing no deal. I want to see. And I just, I brought this shit to reality on account of my ambition and, and me really knowing that all this shit is, it's some work. That's how I came in the game, and I was just always like, we gonna pull this shit off and make it happen. Baby, 
sent to the pastor. I keep going up the ladder. Hey, hey man, make them laugh. I just apply this shit to my art. Rap, music. This shit like my art. It's a plan for me, and I'm on the right track. That's how this shit let me know. If I went on the right track, shit would've went a whole lot of kind of way. I could've came out my career just going straight in there, trying to get on. I'm an independent artist, and I got shit going on. <laughs> Three-tone chain, two-tone watch, two-tone drop. Oh my God, he too hot, he too hot. I stashed a million, forgot all about it, and let the shit rot. Rich crack, baby. Mama and daddy both used to smoke rocks. Rich crack, baby. Now I'm smoking kush with my mom and dad on a yacht. Same hood, fuck my mom and dad up. I made a million off of that block. Yeah, I stay in it with that nigga, but this hustling shit come from my pops. You gave me a hard life, but I ain't tripping though, cause it made me a star. Pull up at the club by the bar, yeah, and I don't even drink, I drink raw. Ha, hey, came in with a check on these bitches. You know I'm a flex on these bitches. Blue rocks around my neck on these bitches. Blue racks, I'm obsessed with these bitches. VS's, they biting, they vicious. Blue roll, it cost me 150. Sliding dolo with my 30 with me. And my chocolate bitch, my Hershey's kisses. Freshest nigga in the whole vicinity. Fake friends, worse than real enemies. Niggas from Scooby like remember me. Now nah, nigga, did I sell you some weed? I buy what I want and what I need. Why you spend all that money on jewelry? Even though you was a crack fan. Mama, you gave birth to a trap king. Mama, ha, you gon' always be my trap queen. Mama, damn, I mean always be my black queen. Mama. I love you to death, it is what it is Shit so crazy, you look just like my kids You had me shooting dice when I was six Then I stopped smoking before I was ten You on my daddy, y'all made a trap, baby I been cutting all of these niggas out lately Don't fit the rest, watch the scrippers go crazy No money involved and I don't got the patience My whole thing was to really just Get these folks just real content About the culture, about the environment About the streets, about just everything Just period So this shit gonna last and they ain't gonna go nowhere this shit would have happened 20 years before me. It's gonna be happening 20, 50 years after me. It's important to just give you folks a real. Place. I know that you're in a better place. It, it, it really broke my heart when this happened, man. But I'm asking God, you know, to take your family and your kids and watch over them. And I just want you to know you always have a special place in, in my heart. I never forget you. I'm going to do everything I can to keep your name going. Long live doubt. Forever. Go on. Hey, what up? It's your player partner, Two Chains, and I just want to send my condolences to the whole Thornton family. Uh, young Dolph's uh, partner kids, the whole PRE, the whole Memphis, you know what I'm saying, um, a real dear friend of mine, I've been knowing Dolph for a very long time, I consider, especially in the rap game, you know, it's like dog years, every year count feel like seven, so I feel like I've known him a long time, we got along instantly, um, we share uh, some, some similarities, some strong similarities, but, you know, overall, man, just a 
a real, real good guy gone too soon. You know what I'm saying? And I want to send my condolences and my prayers uh, to the family. Love. What it do, what it do, man. It's your boy A-Ball. It's your boy Pimp Type. MJG. Also known as Primrose and Mark. You hear me? Yeah. Want to say, man, send my boy off with love, man. Send y'all real good, son. Already. It was always love. Gonna always be love. On earth or wherever. You hear me, man? Man, you are a brother forever, man. Already. And you put on for the city. You made Memphis music step it up. You hear me? And you are the king. Already. I want to send my condolences out to Dolph, his family, friends, all the supporters, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was hard for me to do this. I've been uh, crying and uh, just, just been down, man. You know what I'm saying? For the last few weeks. Rest in peace, young Dolph, my nigga. You you a legend. You did it. You did it for the city of Memphis. We love you, my nigga. We miss you. God bless everybody, man, the family. Memphis, Tennessee, let's stop the violence, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's stop the violence. Hey, say what's happening, man. King paying respects, man, one of the greats. Legendary king in the game. Young Dolph. Man, rest in paradise. Uh, man, everything I known about you, you was always solid. Always stood up on advancement, on progression, financial independence. You know what I mean? Uh, it was always about the greater good of all. It was always about the community. It was always about the team, the fam. You know what I mean? Uh, Man, not too long before you, before you passed, we ran into each other, man. You were coming out of one music fest. I was going in, and we slapped hands, had a brief conversation, exchanged some laughs, and uh, agreed to see each other later on. Later on never happened. But we gonna represent for you, man. We love and respect you. You dig what I'm saying? From one king to another, man, salute. And may the things you stood for continue to stand for generations. All right? In a minute. Yo, what up, what up? It's your girl Gangsta Boo. I'm broadcasting live from L.A., and I just want to give my condolences to Young Dolph family, his label, his friends, and... Um, I just want to share a real quick memory of it I have. When I first heard of Young Dolph, it was at Drummer Boy's house in Atlanta when the Welcome to Dolph Land came out with DJ Scream. I was like, who the hell is Young Dolph? And uh, he showed the world who the fuck he is. And uh, I'm speechless, I'm heartbroken. And, um, you know, what's understood don't gotta be explained. Rest in peace to, um, a real king, real philanthropist, um, a leader, an icon, role model, teacher, and a boss. I'd like to extend my condolences to the French family, loved ones, and anybody close. I just had the honor and the pleasure to meet Dolph. Uh, I can recall him. Brought him to the crib and we sat in the movie theater and yeah. just talked about life, relationships, uh, fatherhood. We talked about everything. And uh, he was so open, he was so real, he was so genuine. And uh, he's gone far too quick. He, he, he was a real one, son. He was a real one that I was proud mm -hmm. that you had a relationship with. He had a major influence in my life, just talking to him and Knowing he just gave me knowledge from a different area of stuff that he done in his life. So I just really respect him. I wish we had more time together. God bless you all. We lost the real one. What it do? It's Paul Wild sending love and condolences from Houston, Texas. 
Say, man, Texas, love young dog. We had a lot of great times together, a lot of good memories. One time I, I never forget is when young dog came down to Fort Ward. That Theezy block, we shot that video for Down South Hustlers. The whole city came out to show love, man. Like I say, Texas, love young dog, man. Much love. Long live dog. Hey. Yeah. One of my favorite memories with Dolph was when I first bought my home and uh, I saw he was out here in Northern California. I invited him up to the crib. We smoked weed, we went through some flavors, but I popped on a movie. I believe it was Planet of the Apes. And uh, he looked at me and said, Burn, what kind of weird shit you got on here? Why is this ape talking? And I never forget that look on his face. He was so confused. But when I explained it to him and we got even higher, I think he enjoyed the, the movie. And we just bonded and vibed out. You know, Dolph was a good dude. He always gave me my flowers when it came to music. Um, and, you know, besides the body of work that we created together, that's one of my favorite memories. He was a real one. He was humble. He was solid. I'm going to miss the hell out of Dolph. Saying love and positive energy to everyone, um, you know, family and friends. I wish I was there with you guys today. Dolph, we're going to miss you. I'm going to smoke one for you right now, brother. Good evening, Memphis. Good evening, Memphis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me first of all, let, let me first of all say how proud and honored I am to be afforded the opportunity to give a tribute and memorial to Young Doe. I met this young man uh, many years ago in Lincoln Park. I was running for re-election, and he came up to me, and he has a group of guys with him. We took pictures, and I was just impressed with his personality. He was dynamic, and we took pictures, and from that point, he blew up to become just an incredible, incredible talent. My message, my message to you this evening is this young man left us far too soon, far too soon. And I want to say to his family that the contributions that he made to music and to mankind will live on and on and on. Now, the message is, in the Bible it says that the poor will always be with us. But what the Bible didn't say was that haters will always be among us. A man should not have to pay a price of death because he excels because he has a lifestyle of his own, because God gave him talent, he should not have to relinquish his life for being himself when he gives to others. I only have five minutes. I'm 81 years old. I want y'all to hear this. Listen to me real, I'm 81. In my career, I've always had to face haters, always having to shake them off. And I want to say to you young people in the rap industry today, your talent is what God gave you. It's contemporary music. It's good. Most of it I don't understand. I had some people, Greg, they said, Dr. Harrington, you're going to go and give tribute to a rapper? Have you heard his lyrics? You know what I said to them? 
Rap music is an art form. Everybody don't have to like it, but it is an art form. And Memphis has grown some of the most talented rappers in the world. So we should celebrate that, not hate that. And let me say one other thing before I take my seat. As a former mayor of Memphis, obviously the stain of Dr. Martin Luther King being assassinated here, and now another dark stain with this young man having to relinquish his life because of his talent and his generosity is another dark stain on the history of Memphis. And I want to say to you all before I take my seat, let us build Memphis up and not tear it down. Let's love each other. Let's respect each other. Let's rise up together and not with division. And to the young man who was explaining something to me the other day, he said, Dr. Harrington, he said, you don't understand, what did he tell me, affiliation? He said, you don't understand retaliation? I said, yes, I do. I understand it from a litter review, and I understand it from the streets. But I want to say to all of you all that talk about affiliations and retaliations, that's bullshit. We need to love each other respect each other. And that's what John Dolph was all about. So my prayers are with the family. Thank you all for giving me an opportunity to speak. When I say say his name, you say young Dolph. Say his name. <laughs> say his name to this family, to Sister Mia, to the kids, to Memphis, and to the world. We're here today to honor the life, the love, and the legacy of Adolph Thornton Jr., Main Main, Paper Route Frank, Flipper, Young Dolph, say his name. For those who may not know, I'm Dr. Earl Fisher. I'm the senior pastor of Abyssinian Baptist Church in Whitehaven. It's a church that's affectionately referred to as the blackest church in Memphis and Shelby County. That means ain't nobody gonna love black folks or stand up for black folks or show up for black folks or speak out for black folks or advocate for black folks more than Abyssinian. So I had to start us off today with some African spirituality. Say his name. See, there's an African proverb that says, as long as we speak a person's name, they shall never die. So say his name. N n now I know, because I've been listening to what's been said around the city, that some people seem to think that a young black man from Castalia is not worth this type of tribute. So let me say this with all of the black pastoral and prophetic fervor and fire I can muster. If we can honor Elvis Presley, I'd be damned if we ain't finna honor young dogs. If we can name streets after racists like Boss Crump, I'd be damned if we ain't naming streets after folks like young dogs. If we can erect statues of folks like Nathan Bedford Forrest and Jefferson Davis and white slave traders, I'd be damned if we won't tear the roof off of the FedEx farm celebrating the life, the love, and the legacy of young Dolph. Say his name. Say his name. Yeah, we came and called his name to evoke his spirit in this place, to show him some love, some deep, profound love, because he loved Memphis. He loved God, he loved his family, and he loved God's people. So in good black preacher fashion, I need to ask us to bow for a moment of prayer before we move into some of these wonderful performances. Won't you pray with me? Holy God, who has created us and sustains us in this life and the next, we thank you today for the life and the witness of the one you sent to South Memphis by way of Chicago to the one you used to uplift and inspire. We ask that you remind us of our ancestral history that did not separate the secular from the spiritual. Remind us that in you, O oh God, all things are sacred. So share your spirit with all of us today. 
breathe on us so that we can take up the mantle of young Dolph, that we might live like he lived and give like he gave. Like our ancestors and elders would sing, if we could help somebody as we travel along, if we can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if we could show somebody that they are traveling wrong, then our living will not be in vain. Help us to make sure that the life and even the tragic, untimely death of Adolph Thornton Jr. will never be in vain. We pray this in the name of all things holy, and all of God's people said together, I say in amen. Memphis, Tennessee, and people watching all over the world, do me a favor. If your life was touched in a profound and positive way by young Dolph, I want you to stand up on your feet, put your hands together, and say his name. Say his name. Say his name. Say his name. Hello, everybody. Hi. <laughs> My girl Monica was going to sing, but she called me to stand in her place. So I'm going to do just that for Young Dolph and for you all and for the Lord. I've learned how to live holy, and I've learned how to live right. No. 
see Jesus hey, hey, Amen When I see the man who died for me The man who set me free I'm on troubles Every one of my disappointments Will all be over When I see Jesus Anybody know who Jesus is? When Jesus is my portion, a constant bread is he.
give you peace when the storm is raging and I'll be your light when the road ahead gets dim told this was one of Dolph's favorite gospel songs. So if you know this song, sing it along with me so we can honor him the way he deserves to be honored. Amen. Tell me what do you do when you've done all you can and it seems like it's never enough and what do you say when your friends turn away and you're all alone, alone. Tell me what do you give when you give in your own? Tell me how to live with the shame. Child, you just stand when there's nothing left to do. You just stand and watch the Lord see you. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand. Tell me, how do you handle the guilt of your past? Tell me, how do you deal with the shame? And how can you smile? When you give in your all, and it seems like you can't make it through, will you just stand when there's nothing left to do? You just stand and watch the Lord see you through. Yes, after you've done all you can, you just stand. In the bondage again, you just stand and endure. God has a purpose, yes, God has a plan. Tell me what do you do when you've done all you can, and it seems like you can't. 
can make it through. Will you just stand? You stand. And you stand. Don't give up. No, 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 don't give up. Just stay in the race. And you will win. God bless you. I don't think it's work. Oh, all right. What's up, y'all? My name is Jose Casado. I'm from New York City. I recently changed my name to Paper Route Coop after I won the challenge. I won the Penguins Challenge, and Dolph gave me $25,000. So I want to say thank you to the state of Tennessee and the city of Memphis for birthing young Dolph giving us young Dolph to the world, you understand? I wanna thank his wife and his kids for being there for him and you know, supporting him throughout his whole career and before that too, you know? He inspired me to do a lot of shit. I'm 27 years old and like, you know what I'm saying? Like I just got out of prison not too long ago. I'm not doing too good, but meeting him and him giving me what he gave me aside from the money, just the words of encouragement that he gave me inspired me to let me know that it's not too late just because I'm 27. You understand? So anybody out there that whatever, however old you are, just know Dolph was 36, right, wasn't he? 
36, right? You know what I'm saying? So it's never too late to get out there and make money, change your family's lives. And I, I don't know what else to say, but I appreciate Young Dolph. I appreciate his whole family. And I appreciate the city of Memphis for giving us Young Dolph. Thank you. Hi, everybody. So a lot of you guys just know me by Lamborghini Jag, all thanks um, to Young Dolph. I wasn't really ready to come on here. I didn't think I was going to be able to talk. But um, I really just am just as grateful as he is more probably because it's crazy what he did. Obviously, we know um, Young Dolph is one of a kind, clearly a GOAT. Um, the realest person on here did so much without having to. Um, I'm trying not to cry, but um, I think it's just crazy. Um, I told him I wanted to come to Memphis, to Tennessee, and get to see where he grew up. Obviously, I didn't want it to be this way. I wanted him to be here, but let's just keep the memories of him, you know, keep hustling, keep abiding by his word, and just move forward. Obviously, he was gone way too soon, but... Um, yeah, long live Dolph. <laughs> hey, how y'all feeling? How y'all feeling? So, my name is Timothy Fletcher. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. I won the Dust Major Challenge for Young Dolph, man. <laughs> you gotta make me cry. All right, so, I just wanna say, like, ever since that day, my life changed for the better dramatically, like, dramatically. And it's what he said to me that really like shocked me for real because he said, at the end of the day, whatever you want, just go and get it and believe in yourself and don't let nobody stop you. And I, he, said, he asked me what I do it for. I said, man, I do it for my family. And he was like, man, if you keep doing it for your family, you ain't never gonna lose. Cause he was like, that's what I do it for. And I was like, dang, like that's crazy. And he was like, matter of fact, we gonna stay in touch. He was the first person, first, Global rapper that say, yo, let's stay in touch. And I'm thinking in my head, like, okay, but I already know how it go, because I, 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 um, I work with a lot of rappers and stuff like that. But he kept his word. I remember I was fighting for my life, because I'm a type one diabetic. I was fighting for my life in the hospital. I had family members that didn't even check up on me. But Dolph called me and asked what was wrong, because he seen my post on Instagram, and I told him, he told me, stay on top of it. Man, like, that's crazy, because I don't even know what to say. Like, that's just crazy because I would never expect that for real. But long live Dolph, man. Like, for real. All Good afternoon, Memphis. My name is Alan Parks, and for the last eight years, I've been extremely blessed to know Dolph, not only as his manager, but as his friend. Dolph was super smart, driven, passionate, focused, authentic, unorthodox, and incredibly unique. These are just a few characteristics that made Dolph the beloved friend, father, son, nephew, cousin, grandchild, artist, boss, we all came to know today. Dolph, you are a titan amongst men, never wavering off the course that you have set for yourself. Always staying true to your roots, always being about taking care of your family, your city, the city of Memphis. It has been an honor to watch you grow into one of the most influential, impactful music artists of your generation. 
From the streets of Memphis to the streets of London, you, you left your mark. You created your own real life empire, paper route. You turned nothing into something for you and your family. Dolph's dedication to his career was unprecedented. I can remember our first promo tour. He had just got all his wisdom teeth pulled and he still came and showed up and handled his business. That entire week, all we ate was smoothies. But that showed me Dolph had what it took to make it. He was relentless. The biggest thing I admire about Dolph was his character and his respect for people. Dolph and I had plenty of disagreements, but one thing never changed was the way he carried himself. He was a true lion. Never losing his emotion or changing his tone. It was always the politest, no, or simple, I ain't doing that. <laughs> Dolph always kept things in-house and only dealt with family when it came to business. So I am honored and appreciative of how much he respected and cared about me and the Street is X family. He had trusted us in his career and bringing all of his visions to life. Dolph didn't move outside of the empire for nothing or nobody. It's been an honor to be a part of such a special person's life and career. Finally, I would want to say thank you, Dolph. Our business and personal relationship will always hold a special place in my heart. And I will forever, and you will forever be part of the Street is X family. Long live Dolph, the king of Memphis. God blesses, God blesses Mia, the kids, the family, the entire PRE team. It's forever paper our business with me. Been in the business smoking more rock. Pocket full of mother blue Half an ounce in my Gucci two socks. For the summertime, got a new drop. My been my been in the business smoking more rock. Pocket full of mother blue rock. Half an ounce in my Gucci two socks. For the summertime, got a new drop. My been in the business smoking. I've been in the business smoking, I've been in the business smoking more. Rock, I've been in the business smoking, I've been in the business smoking, I've been in the business smoking more. Rock, I've been, I've been in the business smoking more. Rock, I've been, I've been in the business smoking more. Rock, pocket full of mother, blue, rock, half an ounce in my Gucci too. For the summertime, got a new drop. My been, my been in the business smoking more. Rock, my been, my been in the business smoking more. Rock, pocket full of mother, blue, blue, rock. My been, my been in the business smoking more. Rock, my been in the business smoking more. Rock, my been, my been in the business smoking more. Rock, my been in the business.
smoking more. All I need is one scale, a couple bills. Came in this shit by myself. Don't why you fuck this girl up? Uh, shit, cause I'm a player. One scale, a couple bills. Came in this shit by myself. Don't why you fuck this girl up? Uh, shit, cause all I need is one scale, a couple bills. Came in this shit by myself. Don't why you fuck this girl up? Uh, shit, cause all I need is one scale, a couple bills. Came in this shit by myself. One scale, a couple bills. Came in this shit by myself.
bro, don't get that shit on my seats, bro. Mobbing in the business, smoking more hey. rocks. Hey. Pocket full of motherfuckers. Blue, blue, guap. guap. Half a ounce in my Gucci two, two. Socks. socks. For the summertime, got a new what? drop. <laughs> Trapper slash rapper slash bad. Snatch it. Come here. Baby mama mad. She said you live like a bachelor. So what? Sold a hundred pounds. Then gave 10% to the pastor. Church. Keep going up the ladder. Hey. They my son, when I'm gone, you gonna be a rich look. Yeah. Pointers on me hitting. Woo. Leave a dizzy. Oh. All my old feeling salty. Yeah, yeah. In my dizzy. Hey. First of all, I brought my son up here just to let people know that dog changed generations. My son right here, he changed my life, so he changed my son's life. So it's so crazy that I'm gonna tell y'all a story. Like, before everything happened, man, it's so crazy. He called me, was like, bro, come do the video. So I come do the video. The man got like, I know about twenty, thirty thousand dollars on. So I do the video, and my ugly ass nigga, let me do my motherfucking thing up here. You don't tell me what the fuck I need to be doing. <laughs> tell his ass something. <laughs> but y'all check this out. So before then, I was just like a local comedian, like. I was just getting like $500 a show and all this shit. So I'm expecting this man to give me some money. I'm like, man, I know this nigga finna give me something. He ain't finna have no motherfucking 50,000 over here and he ain't finna give me shit. I'm over here in the hood and my motherfucking grandma's house and he ain't giving me shit. So I'm mad as a motherfucker. I go back to the house, I'm like, man, hell no, nah, I know this nigga ain't. Man, he gonna not give me nothing, seriously? So shit, about a month go by. Um, I'm at the crib, I call him, I say, my brother, you know what's crazy? I'm getting $5,000 for a video now. <laughs> this nigga tell me, bro, then I tell you. I'm like, damn, this shit crazy. Man, it's just so crazy how this man just changed my life, literally, like, I didn't have nothing. I didn't have a fucking car. I didn't have a fucking car. I'm riding my baby mama car around the city. Real shit. I'm riding her regular car around the city. I ain't have a goddamn car. And now I'm having everything, you know what I'm saying? It's so crazy, like I'm, I'm owning houses, I'm giving away houses, I'm goddamn giving away cars, and all this shit cause of him. All this shit cause of bruh. Without that man, I wouldn't be sitting right here right now, I wouldn't have nothing. My son wouldn't have nothing. I wouldn't even be able to feed my son. I wouldn't be able to feed my family. Now we having shit. And I wanna say, Hey, ain't nobody did it like my boy. My boy was independent. My boy popped this shit. I ain't no rapper in Memphis fucking with my boy. That's a fact. My boy put that shit on, you hear me? And that's why I got that shit on today, because of my boy. That's why my son got that shit on, because of my boy. And we gonna keep popping this shit, man. Paper rap for life, man, you hear me?
Good afternoon, Memphis. I'm Auntie, and this is my family. Thank you. <laughs> we are offspring of Ida Mae, but we are missing one very important person, and that person is Main Main. Main Main was the glue that held our family together. Oh, I see my brother. Please stand, Adolf. I didn't know he wasn't up here. May Main's father. And I think my sister-in-law, Diane, Adolf's mother. Thank you. May Main has given me the strength to make it to all of the programs that we had planned for the city of Memphis and for the street renaming. But today, I woke up different. I didn't feel the same. I didn't feel the same strength All I want to say now is, I'm sad, I'm mad, and I want my boy. Hello, everybody. I'm Carlisa, I'm Young Dolph, AKA May May. That's who he is to me, May May. I'm his second oldest sister. And I have here with me is my oldest, who's the oldest of us all, Erica, um, here with me. Um, as a family, we are just so blessed to have had a brother, nephew, cousin, friend like May May. Since his passing, it feels like a piece of us is just gone. He was the glue to it all. Looking back on the things that he accomplished, the legacy he, that he has built, it just make us smile. We were so honored and blessed, so honored and blessed that my family and I we're just able to witness greatness, to see somebody in our family go for what they know, do what they love, and build it from the ground up. He poured so much into his family, community, and those around him. We definitely missed, we definitely missed everything about May May. His smile, His generosity, his bossiness, his love, support, his laugh, convos, FaceTiming with us, and just everything about him, I can just go on and on. We will continue to hold it down for you, May May, and continue to pour into others as you did. We love you so much until we meet again. Hi everyone, <clears throat> my name is Erica. Uh, there are so many emotions that I'm going through on a daily basis. I was just able to put, uh, find a point to put some of my feelings and words that I have together because I couldn't just take the time out to sit there to write anything. 
because like my sister and my aunt, it's just, you go from one way to the next, you're either smiling, you might start crying, thinking about things, because you're sad, you're angry, you fish, you're ready to fight, you, you, you just so many things that you're going through. But I have this poem here that says, in memory of a wonderful brother. The author is unknown. I hold on to our memories, the ones that are so dear, to try to keep you always close. Now you are not here. You were called, it was your time, but it is so true, you have left a legacy. There was no one like you. You were very special, and I want to say I feel lost in so many ways. You are not here today, but I will never forget you. I know I have been blessed to have you for my brother because you were the best. Thank you. Hey! 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 <laughs> Greetings to everyone. I'm student minister Abdul Muthakir Muhammad, here on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, we stand here today to join in the celebration of the life of our brother, Memphis' own Adolph Thornton Jr., better known to the world as Young Dolph. Say his name. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, as I sit here, this is a beautiful service. And the sight of so many of you here, beautiful brothers and sisters from Memphis and around the world, it reminds us of the beautiful scripture in Psalms 133 where it says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell in unity. That's right. Your presence here today shows a strong demonstration of our unity, and I'm telling you, you look very beautiful here. We are gathered and united today during a special moment in time for a special fitting purpose. We are here to convert mourning into celebration to replace sadness with joy and to seize upon and to feed upon the positive. My teacher, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan offered powerful insight into life and death and he said in words that when we live, we are all writing our book. He said that each day that we live, we are writing our testament until death comes. He said that life takes so many twists and turns that one could never fully know a person until the death of that individual. He says, then the historians come and gather all the bits and pieces of evidence in the person's life and work. Then the historians assign this person his or her place in history. So in truth, one can never receive one's true reward while they are alive. Our brother Young Dolph is no longer writing his testament. And it is now that many of us can see his life, marvel over the great gift that God gave to our brother 
and marvel over the brilliance of who he was and is. My first encounter with Doe was in 2015 here in Memphis as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was traveling the country preparing for the 20th anniversary of the Million Man March. When he came to Memphis, he wanted to speak with the religious leaders, the political leaders, but he also wanted to speak with the young, the youth, the rappers, the cultural community, the spiritual community, one of the first ones to sign up to come to meet with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was Dolph. And they put that picture of him and Minister Farrakhan on his Instagram page. And then he made, later made a reference to the Honorable Minister Farrakhan in one of his songs called Point Across. History will show that our brother was an evolving human being and revolutionary in his own way. An evolving human being. Many love him because of his music and his, uh, for the fact of his success. It made us proud to have, because he was from Memphis, we were proud. But he was much more than an artist, more than a celebrity, an ambassador for the city. He was an evolving human being. There's an author, Charles Holmes, from Billboard's magazine who said about Dolph, he said, young Dolph will make you believe in yourself. He talks with the passion of a preacher, rhythmically speaks with the intensity of a motivational speaker, and radiates the warmth of a father figure. Mr. Holmes later on wrote about young Dolph in 2018 after he put out the album or the CD, Role Model. And he asked Dolph why did he label or title the CD role model? And Dolph said these words, it's like us being these artists, being in a situation, being in a position that we are in. We've got to realize that people of my age and older people and younger people, they look up to me. They listen to my lyrics for wisdom. They listen to my lyrics for like game and they listen to my lyrics for real deal beneficial purposes. Here's a young man, but he realizes that he can instill and inspire people to do better. And he's coming to that realization, he's evolving. And Dolph was rising to this occasion because he was accepting his duty and responsibility to be a community leader. While his profession gained wealth and success for him and his family, he identified the need of the community and was seeking to fill in in his own way. He didn't just make an album called Role Model. He was a role model in his own right. So now the question is, brothers and sisters, that we are here. The question arises, who will step up like he did? Who among us will realize that whatever our situation is in life, we have a responsibility and a duty to our community. In this audience, we have fathers and mothers and students and entrepreneurs. We have social workers and regular workers, nurses and doctors and professional people. The life of young Dolph places before all of us a worthy example and a profound challenge. And that challenge that I want to share with you as I leave, the time is now, dear family, for us to accept responsibility to change the reality of our community, to do our part in the community, to become role models as young Dolph did. If there's anything in him that you admired and loved, anything in him that you appreciated, then instill that in yourself. And then you radiate that to others. I heard a man stand up here and say, because of what young Dolph did for him, he can now take care of his family. And that appreciation was instilled from him down into his child. That is the goal of all of us to do. Whatever we admire of our brother, let us do that. We have a pressing and urgent need to apply Dr. Martin Luther King's philosophy of nonviolence 
in our own community. I am your brother, and I'm standing here on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, and we extend our hand to anyone who wants to make our communities a safer place to live. We want to work with you. All of us have a, 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 a responsibility to do something. So as I close, our condolences to the family, to the mother, to children. And may God bless us all to remember, and not only just remember, but instill the values that young Dolph had into our communities. Thank you. Peace be unto you. Dolph, you're a king, boy. That's all I want you to know. You're a king. You're a real king. I had to represent for you, and I will continue to represent for you. As long as I got a breath in me, watch. You're a true soldier. TRU to the bone gristle. That's how I feel, bro. Your spirit will live on. Trust me, bro. You did a lot for the community. You did a lot for people. You was there for a lot of people, bro. Dudes that make it don't do that. They don't have that mindset you had. You been in the game. They, they ain't coming like you, dope. They ain't coming like dope. I'm serious, bro. People make it and they forget about where they come from. They forget about them. As long as they got, they don't be tripping. But not dope. You heard me? Not dope. I want y'all to know I'm in a pen for real. They gave me life. They, that mean they want me to die up in jail. You feel me? And when you're in this situation, a lot of people run out on your own family. You heard me? So for dope to come through and holler at me, that was some real stuff right there, bro. And it's a trip how it all happened. It's a trip. How me and him got introduced to each other. Yeah, he reached out to Monica and he was telling her, like, look, the only way I see to get to see is to go through you. That's what I heard. And she was like, what's up? And he was like, I want to go visit him. You heard me? I want to visit my dog. I look up to him. That's my favorite rapper. You heard me? But it was COVID time. He couldn't come. See what I'm saying? So she said, be cool. We're going to make it happen. Then she hollered at me, put me on the phone with him. Me and him talked. And I, right then and now, I knew we When Monica put me and Dolph on the phone, bro, I just felt his soul. He felt my soul. I said, dog, when I touch down, we're going to be like this. You heard me? I like your style. I like how you rock. You 100%. You pure. You, you true. Straight up. And that's the only kind of people I want to surround myself around. And um, all I can say is I'm going to miss him to the fullest, bro. I ain't going to even lie. It's a piece of me. Monica gonna read y'all the real uh, heartfelt letter that I wrote, you know, and um, I know he looking down on us right now and seeing everybody and seeing the love that he getting and the support that his family getting. And what I need y'all to do is to continue to show this kind of love and this kind of support to his wife, his kids, and everything that he is involved in, you heard me? Real talk, this dude a soldier. I received instruction to read to you all his feelings about Adolf. He said, my name is Corey Miller, known to the world as C. Murder. I've been locked up 20 summers. I did this time by myself, providing for my daughters. Sitting in the dungeon sometimes, thinking, will I die in prison? I got a life sentence, and I was wrongfully convicted because I've remained silent. I've been through it all, but a bright light 
would shine upon you. That light was young Dolph. Finally, after all these years, a real one steps up and reaches down to pull up a true soldier. I've been good to the game since birth. I deserved a soldier's welcome, but I didn't always get it. Dolph was not related to me. He was just a solid dude. He was on top of his game and his grind. The respect he had for me helped me to stay strong throughout my trials and tribulations. Out of the blue, he reached out to Monica and said he wanted to visit me. He gave things to my daughters financially. He talked to me. He checked on me weekly. And the first thing he would ask was how was my spirits? He was truly a thug's angel. God put him in my life for a reason. I am a better man because of Adolf. I will never forget him and I will keep his name ringing in my music and in the streets. This dude is so special that God knew he needed him. It's time for us to be there for his wife and kids. And to those real enough to understand, not just of our industry, please respect his memory as the martyr he has become and pay it forward to Adolf's wife and kids. Y'all know what I mean. Make sure that they're straight and do like Adolf did. Don't ask, just execute. Rest in peace in paradise, Dolph. I will love you forever. See murder. <laughs> I want to say to Adolf's family, his mother and father, his Aunt Rita and everyone that he loved so dearly, that the most important thing in his life was to make you proud and to make sure none of you want it for anything. I would take him out to eat and I would make sure the restaurant was as bougie as I possibly could so that I could laugh at Adolf pushing the unnecessary folks to the side. I asked him what was the most important thing to him and he told me it was two things, my son and my daughter. Mia, I pray that I can in some way be there for you as your life changes tremendously day by day. Your children meant so much to their father that there was never a conversation where at least something that they said or did did not come up. When I asked Adolf, what song of mine do you love? He said, I ain't gonna lie. I don't listen to all that unless I'm with Mia. <laughs> and I told him, the way you respect and honor her will give your daughter the ability to love herself beyond what any man she comes in contact with ever could. I told him, keep doing what you're doing. And he said, well, what is your motivation? I said, real people. People like you that think enough of others to put themselves to the back at times. Pre is a legacy that will not stop just because of Adolf's transition. 
what the devil means for bad, God will always make good of. And to be absent in body is to be present with the Lord. So you took him from us in the physical realm, but he is elevated even higher to take his dream and what he wanted for those that he loved to the next level. He asked me to sing on a record and I said, okay, just send it to me. He said, you know what? Don't, don't sing on mine first. I want you to sing on Jody's because I want every artist that come up under me to know how special they are. He said, I'm creating kings and queens all over the places. And if they don't see what I'm doing, they're going to respect what I'm doing. To Glock, Daddy-O, Jody, and every single one of you, your well-being for him came first. Not just your music, but your lives were important to him. And he is the epitome of the most important three letters of his favorite rapper, True. His tenacity, his resilience, and his understanding for his God-given purpose cannot be taken in any shape, form, or fashion. As he continues to touch all of our lives, I ask that you honor him by doing good for those that you love. Honor him by being good in your communities. And to those that have become my family, I'll always keep it real with my dog no matter what. I haven't said this in about eight or nine years, but I hear former students calling my name and I'm getting a little choked up. Mm. So I just want to tell them, and if you went to Hamilton, love Hamilton. Absolutely. Let me stop, because I think my mama's watching. About two weeks ago, a few weeks ago, when it happened, all I could think about, first thing I thought about, first person, and I'm gonna use their government name, is that, if that's all right, Glock. I thought about Markevious. See, because he was just Markevious first to me. Thought about Josh, thought about Wu. And I thought about the fact that their lives had been changed, all because of a student that was in my all-male class, my all-boys class back at Corey. See, to the rest of the world, he was young Dolph, Vic Flipper. But in seventh grade, he was just Adolph. And I remember, you know, because I've been doing this a long time, I've been around South Memphis a long time, educating kids, in South Memphis a long time, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I love him, and I loved him. But Adolph was a little different. Quite a few media sources have reached out and said, well, you know, how was he as a kid? Did he set himself apart? I was like, it really wasn't anything that he did to set himself apart, but he moved differently. He grooved differently because he was built differently. 
He wasn't really outspoken, but I remember he wasn't really trusting neither. He was somewhat guarded. You know, when other kids would speak to him and run up, hey, Mr. Bates, hey, coach, hey, this. Adolph would just sit back and look real cool as he did and nod his head like, what's up, Mr. Bates? <laughs> I'm like, what's up, son? But I remember one day we were, I was calling Roe and somebody teased him about his name, Adolph. Man, he was ready to put hands on him and I'm a being a young teacher trying to break it up and I'm trying to talk to him, talk him down. And I said, son, you know your name means something. You got to embrace it. And he was like, you know, man, but you, I don't want him talking about me. I don't want him messing with me. I don't want him doing this. And before you really, Adolph, you had to find a way to get in. But one thing I realized, he loved to laugh. And I said, man, I grew up just a few blocks from Tulane Projects. My last name, Bates. So I had to go to school with kids putting master in front of my name all the time and saying, Master Bates. So, man, if I can make it, you can make it. Your name means something. And when I said Master Bates, you know, I'm speaking to a seventh grade kid, and he bust out the laugh and like, man, Mr. Bates, you all right. You pretty real. A few years later, as I matriculated to be the principal at Hamilton High School, it was about 2008 or so, he came back to the school. His brothers were still there, I think, Marcus and Timothy. But he came to see me and Coach Park in the office. He started telling me about, he was tickled that I was the principal. And he said, man, you moving up, ain't it, Mr. Bates? <laughs> and I said, I guess so, son. And he said, man, I'm about to blow up too. And he gave me a CD. And I remember listening to it, it was Flavors. And if you've been following him a long time, do your history. And so, man, I was, we were getting ready for lunch, and y'all know at Hamilton back then, we needed all hands on deck when we getting ready to go to lunch. <laughs> so I'm walking him out, and I hugged him. We shook up, and I was like, ooh, we, son. Man, hold on, Adolph. Go to my office. Go, go back in the bathroom in my office, man. Get some cologne. <laughs> yeah, that's like I said in my Facebook post. His favorite herbal cologne was loud. But think about the fact that what he did, he changed lives. He made millionaires out of kids from South Memphis. The fact that I stand here today is partly because of him, but the fact that he told me, Mr. Bates, I'm about to blow up too, and he did it. How many teachers and principals can say they actually taught someone that was a national rap icon? So I stand here today, man, and I'm in, Got a little choked up, but I'm glad to do it. And as I leave, my kids, keep it up, son. You got a legacy to uphold. Love Hamilton. Absolutely. Jamia, this is dedicated to you. Never can say goodbye. No, 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 no. Never can say goodbye. Even though the pain and heartache seems to find me when Try and try to find it, but my feelings seem to show. Though you always say you're leaving me, and I always have to say no. Tell me why is it so? But I, I never can 
Put your light and put your phones up in the air and just sway it from side to side for golf, y'all. Put them up in the air, y'all. Because he's an angel, y'all. Time. 
Hello, everyone. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm going to have to take a little moment for a second. Oh, thank you. For nearly a decade, I had the pleasure, the honor. I had the most pleasurable time of my life with Adolf. Robert Thornton Jr. He was the most brilliant man, intelligent man, unique man, charming man. He was just everything. And I'm so, so blessed to have been able to experience him for nearly a decade. He had such a benevolent spirit, a giving heart, a heart of gold, I said it once and I'll say it again. He had a, a heart of David, one after God's own heart. And I'll say that to the day I die because I mean that from the bottom of my heart. So unique, just such a, a unique spirit. And I knew that from the first time, I'm not gonna say the first time I met him, but it was the first time that I really got to know him. And I had conversations with him and I would see, we would go on dates and we would go to Houston's or just anywhere. And, and if we were walking and somebody came up like, hey, can I get your leftovers? He would literally go back inside the restaurant and order something altogether new just to give that person something to eat. And I don't think it was Houston's, it was actually Half Shell <laughs> at that time. Um, but I just would be amazed at, like you, you were literally going back in. I thought that was just so just awesome, you know, and it, it made me love and like him more at that time. Just, I never, I never experienced someone to be that giving. I even witnessed him once, we were out of town, we was out of the country, and he was so eager to, to go into the town where everybody was, and he wanted to just give. He, he literally, all the money in his pocket, he gave away. Gave away to all of the young boys that came up, and one boy came up and said, I didn't get anything. And he looked around, and he looked at his feet, and he took the shoes off of his feet and he gave this young boy the shoes off of his feet and walked until we found some Crocs or somebody selling something just nearby in the town. And it was just that selflessness, that spirit that he had that made me literally fall in love with him, that nothing, nothing that could be done or said could ever make me look at him any differently than just having a good heart and being a good spirited man. And so I'm, I'm honored to have experienced him. I'm honored to have been fruitful and multiply with him because I have two blessings. They both, they both embody his spirit. And I'm just, like I said, it's, 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 it's definitely painful to not have him in our lives. But one thing I know for sure and for certain is that he is in our hearts. He's guiding us. He's our, our angel. He's our guiding star. He's done so many things to just endow wisdom and knowledge and impart so many valuable lessons on me and my family that I, I know we'll all cherish, each and me and Ari and uh, Trey, we'll all cherish what he has done and, and 
the seven years and the four years of their lives. He just did so much. And when I look back to just see how short this time we had with him, and especially for them, how short this time was, but how much had been, has been done, I'm just very thankful. I'm just thankful. And I'm just like, I, I'm thankful to God because it's like, I absolutely never wanted to see this happen. I never wanted to experience this not one time, but twice. But I'm just, I have to just be thankful to God that he just gave Adolf to us. Because like I said, he was just so amazing. And I'm not saying that just because he's gone now. I would tell him that when he was here with us. You're amazing. I'm glad that we, we chose life together. I want to stay here forever because we were really basking in love. That was my love. That was my soulmate. And no matter any bad days we might have had, the good and the goodness that he, we shared together, it outweighed any sort of bad ever, any bad day or anything, because he was just, he was just an awesome, amazing man. And so I just pray to God that he heals my heart, he heals my children's heart, and that we can just be able to live strong in the spirit of Dolph. Long live Dolph. We love you. Everybody. My name is Adolf Robert Thornton III, and I, and I am just happy to be here because my dad was the person who raised me, and he wanted, and he trained me to be a good man when I grow up. First, when I, first when I was younger, I used to, I used to love playing, and and he was only the only thing I could think about. But now since he, but now since he had death. Now I'm just going to I'm going to make it up to the whole world and I'm going to be the greatest person you you will ever know. My name is Arya and and my dad I love him cuz I I know who he is and he's the best that I know cuz I just like to play with him in my heart cuz he cuz he still my heart and I and I'll keep and I and I'll keep thinking of him for forever and ever and ever on 3 I want everybody to say long live dog 1 2 3 long live dog everybody stand to your feet and put your hands together one more time for these wonderful people <clears throat> come on Memphis you could do better than that yeah say his name say his name say his name I want to introduce somebody I want to simply say yesterday I was asked by one of my colleagues if we could get the hip-hop community to agree to put the guns down and I said, I'm sure we could. Ain't that right, Memphis? Yeah. Then I said, and also, we need to make sure we get white nationalists and white supremacists who shoot up schools and storm capitals to put their guns down, too. And we need to get police officers who shoot and kill unarmed black folks to put their guns down, too. Because ain't no Uzis made in Orange Mound. Ain't no Winchester rifles made in White Haven, and they weren't manufacturing Dracos in Dixie Homes. In order for that to happen, somebody has to write some policies. Somebody has to make some proclamations and do some political work. And some of our folks who are in office ain't worth the salt on Doss shoes. But there is one that I want to introduce who's going to make a presentation to these wonderful people. And this sister is 
someone who, like Dolph, knows how to turn dirt into diamonds. So I want y'all to put your hands together and receive State Senator Katrina Robinson. Thank you, Pastor Fisher. Good afternoon. Or should I say, hey. <laughs> Since the day Dolph was taken from us, one thing has been made extremely clear by the outpouring of love from all over the world. He was much more than our favorite Memphis rapper. Dolph did much more than give us a soundtrack to our turnips. While he undoubtedly helped put Memphis on the map with hit after hit and will forever be named among the greatest rap legends from here, he also shone a light on this city through his philanthropy. He was a selfless individual who believed in real, tangible action. And when all is said and done, this city is better because of it. And I don't care who has anything to say about it. His contributions during his time here on Earth go far beyond music. Not only was he a devoted partner, father, son, nephew, brother, and businessman, he was also deeply devoted to this city. He was devoted to the potential growth and development of his community, especially our youth. Dolph created more national artists, more real estate investors, more comedians, more entrepreneurs, more philanthropists, and so much more. He showed our youth what was possible when you stay true to yourself and pursue your dreams at all costs. He was proud to be from South Memphis. He treated everyone he encountered with the utmost respect and compassion, no matter what they were asking for. He was always willing and ready to serve and support. Even his final moments were spent supporting his community. So it's only fitting that we memorialize his life in the history books of our state. And so I would like to present the family with a resolution from the state of Tennessee. You can bring it over here. Thank you, Jamal. So I'm going to read this out because I don't think we've quite enumerated all of his accomplishments during his time, so I want to make sure that everybody knows what kind of man we're talking about today. Whereas we are greatly saddened to learn of the untimely passing of Adolph Robert Thornton Jr. of Memphis, and whereas Memphis rap legend Adolph Thornton, known professionally as Young Dolph, was an exemplary gentleman and consummate professional who worked assiduously to improve the quality of life for his fellow citizens in numerous capacities. And whereas born on July 27, 1985 in Chicago, Illinois, Mr. Thornton was raised primarily by his grandmother in South Memphis from four years of age. He attended Hamilton High School as a teenager. And whereas young Dolph began his music career in 2008 when he released his first mixtape, Paper Route Campaign. Two years later, he formally established his independent record label, Paper Route Empire, and subsequently released Welcome to Dolph World. And whereas with the release of his mixtapes, High Class Street Music, High Class Street Music Episode 2 in 2011, Young Dolph began to develop his own rap flow, shifting away from a style similar to, to widely known Memphis rap acts 3 Six Mafia and 8 Ball and MJG, MJG, I'm sorry, into a personal style described as vociferous with a magnetic delivery and uniquely deep voice. And whereas Young Dolph's star continued to rise, and in 2016 he was featured on OT Genesis' hit double platinum single, Cut It, and later that year released his debut album, King of Memphis, under Paper Route Empire. As his popularity increased, he received offers for major label rec record deals, but he turned them down, preferring to stay independent. And whereas in 2018, Young Dolph signed a distribution deal with Empire Distribution, and in July 2019, in a joint venture between Paper Route Empire and Empire Distribution, he collaborated with Key Glock on the album Dumb and Dumber, which peaked at number eight on the Billboard 200, earning each of the artists his first top 10 album. And whereas during the COVID-19 pandemic, Young Dolph released the single Sunshine amid rumors of his retirement from music, he also released edited album covers of previous releases on streaming services to feature individuals wearing surgical masks to highlight and address the global pandemic. And on August 14, 2020, he released his seventh album, Rich Slave, 
which was the highest charting album peaking at number four on the Billboard 200. And whereas in addition to his successful career as a musician, young Dolph was known in his hometown for his philanthropy. He donated $50,000 to his alma mater and gave motivational speeches to their students on the regular. He held Mother's Day brunches for domestic violence victims and substance abusers and contributed yearly to the Tennessee Arts Academy Foundation. Whereas he also donated and delivered Thanksgiving turkeys across the city of Memphis, including Hickory Hill, Westwood, and South Memphis, including Lemoyne Gardens and Castelia, and visited the patients and staff of West Clinic to acknowledge the beautiful work they do. He also hosted the annual back to school block party where he donated school supplies and backpacks to the youth. And whereas Adolph Thorne was deeply devoted to his family, and he always endeavored to remain true to family values of the highest order. And whereas he leaves to mourn his memory, his two children, Adolph Thornton III and Aria Thornton and his partner, Jamia Jardine, as well as a host of adoring fans, extensive family, his PRE team, and the rest of the world. And whereas Mr. Thornton leaves behind an indelible legacy of integrity, probity, compassion, and loyalty in his life and diligence and dedication in all of his chosen endeavors, and where it is fitting that we should remember the bountiful life of such an exceptional human being now therefore, I, Randy McNally, Speaker of the Senate of the 112th General Assembly of the State of Tennessee, in conjunction with Senator Katrina Robinson and the undersigned, do hereby proclaim that we honor the memory of Adolph Robert Thornton Jr., reflecting fondly upon his impeccable character, his loyal commitment to living the examined life with courage and conviction. We express our sympathy and offer our condolences to the family of Mr. Thornton, proclaimed in Nashville, Tennessee, on this 18th day of November 2021. I would like to present this to you, Jameer. But in true doll fashion, we don't stop there. It's truly a shame that we continue to lo lose our young black men to gun violence. As fulfilling as it is to be able to reminisce on how talented and exceptional a man Dolph was, it physically pains me to stand here and talk to you about yet another person we have lost due to senseless violence in this city. How much tragedy do we have to experience before we collectively decide that enough is enough and that we have to do something? So I'm calling on all of our elected officials, including our mayor, our law enforcement, community leaders, school leaders, and the community, the community, to really come together to formulate a realistic plan that we can all execute together to stop all this violence because our city deserves better. Our children deserve better. Dolph deserve better. We all want Dolph's, Dolph's legacy to be marked by service, by loyalty, and by commitment to our community, reaching back to elevate those around us. So at the request of the paper route team and his beloved Aunt Rita, November 17th will now officially be designated as the Adolph Young Dolph Thornton Jr. Day of Service in Tennessee. And not only will we do this in Tennessee through legislation, that means that Young Dolph has his own day of service on November 17th, just like Martin Luther King has his own day of service on January 17th. And to those who don't understand how we can name a day of service after this young man, I don't have anything to say. Dolph was one of those people, I've talked to so many people on this team and so many people from his family, he was one of those people who will meet you where you are. Whatever need you had, he would meet you where you are. He would pull you away from the people that he was traveling with just so he could have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you and show you the respect and the dignity that you, reserve, you, you um, deserve by approaching him. And I feel like with our youth, one of the things we need to do is meet them where they are. We need them to understand that they're not killers, but they are kings. Just like Dolph understood that he was a king. And so November 17th will serve as that day where we engage those youth in order for them to give back to their community just as Dolph did. And not only in Tennessee, but special shout out to State Representative Erica Thomas in Georgia,
The state of Georgia will also recognize November 17th as Adolph Thornton Day. To Mia, to Aunt Rita, to the rest of the family, we are praying for you. We will be here for you in whatever time of need that you have. We know that this is a difficult time in talking to uh, both the management team and the family, so I want you to know that we are all here, and I want to acknowledge our elected officials as well who showed up today too. Uh, Councilman J.B. Smiley is here. I saw Councilman uh, Mikhail Lauer, and of course our beloved mayor forever, W.W. Harrington. Family, you can call on us at any time. Thank you. Everybody, if you feel sad about my dad dying, just I'm going to let you know that everything will be fine because if you don't know, then I will know that I will become a great man because my heart is like my dad. to a few seconds, man, so I just want you to know I love you, bro. I appreciate everything you did for me, and thank you, man, for all the experience. Long live, dog. Paper wrap, bitch. A friend for over 30, a brother for a lifetime, a motivator, a great guy. He said something, he stood on it. He made time for himself. Not only for his family, other people's family, his kids, a genius, an all-round stand-up guy. Love you forever. Real king of Memphis. Young Dolph. Yo, Dolph. Um, I can't do this in a short amount of time because you did so much for people. Not only myself and people that you knew, but people you didn't know just because you had a care heart, you know. And you know I love you. And I want to let everybody else know that I love you too, man. Hey, dog. What's your boy Habbo, man? I remember you told me no neck last forever. But this paper I think you got going on, this long live dog, it's forever, my boy. I love you. Long live dog. Shipper. Man, bro, you was my friend, mentor, brother. Bro, you meant everything to me, bro. Like... I wanted to be just like you, bro. Like, no lie. And I miss you, bro. Flipper, my man, dog, Frank. My mean the world to me. My mean what a father mean to a son. Feel me what a big brother mean to a little brother, man. You feel me? My believe in me and I believe in myself. I love you, dude. Set the record straight. <laughs> but you the reason why I'm able to do everything I'm doing. You're the reason why I'm doing house giveaways, car giveaways. You're the reason why I'm able to take care of my son. You're the reason why I'm able to be there for my family. Bro, I just love you and thank you. Dolph, this is Ray Ray. I just want you to know I appreciate you for being a part of your journey over the past 10 years. I'm forever grateful for your love, respect, your loyalty, everything you showed me, big bro. Till we meet again, I love you, man. Yo, the bell, my dog. My big brother I never had, my mentor, my role model, the neighborhood hero, the one changed my life. Gave me so much game. We literally watched each other become successful and put in so much work and got so much recognition from it. But I love you for real though. You know, be slimy on holding down. Dolph is and will always remain my brother. He taught me things in this world about life, music, and perception. Overall, how to be a boss and the captain of a ship. As I sit back and reflect on the happiness and ambition that he put in my life, all I can do is think about my paper route family, knowing that he set us up eternally. Long live Flip, paper route empire for life. Flipper, my big brother, my mentor, my 
coach. Growing up, I wanted to be just like you, so in reality, you're my role model. I appreciate everything I learned from you. I appreciate all the time you spent trying to help me, motivate me, push me to be bigger than what I even thought I could be. You know what I'm saying? You're a real family man. You're a real stand-up guy. You're a legend. You're the GOAT. Everybody knows so it gives off. I got you for life, brother. I love you. Silver, my dog. You was a really, bro. You changed my whole life, bro. You heard me? I don't know what I'm going to do without you, bro, but we're going to keep it alive, though. You know what I'm saying? I love you, dog. Heavy rap beat. Forever. You say, dog, was a big brother to me. You meant the world to me. He was my mentor. He was my cheat code. He was my inspiration. He was my motivator. And like he just gave my hood hope. Like he gave the hood hope. Like he was somebody to watch, somebody to look up to. Somebody I wanted to be like. Yo, what's up, Doc? It's your little brother Shy Man. I just want to say thank you for everything. You always been a mentor, a big brother, and an inspiration to me. We gon' always be family. If you know, you know. Go on, Lynn Dolph. To me, Dolph was a brother, a best friend, a business partner, a life coach, a therapist. Um, you know, what wasn't he? He was everything to me, and and I'm gonna keep going because that's what I, that's what he wanted to do. Um, and I just wanted to know that I love him. Dolph, the first story you ever told me is I don't do this for the money. I do this for my team, family, and friends. Everyone in this room today are here to support you, love you, and take care of your legacy that you have. Just like you, we truly believe what your passion was, which is that it's never about the money. It's about the people that are around you that will always push you to be the best person that you can be. We will always miss you, and we'll love you, and we're here to keep your legacy alive. Don't go bound. Flip. He was more than my favorite rapper, y'all. He heard me deep with this one. It's a pain I never leave. I ain't never had nobody to come to me. Get hard on me about my health, you hear me? Dude did that. Dude did stuff for the city. He ain't care if it got back to the media or none of that. He just had a big heart for the city, you know what I'm saying? I'm forever hold it down for dude. Hey, Rob, baby. Oh. Um. Flip. Fine. Like a big brother to me. Inspiration. Friend, family. Treating me like family. Doll showed me that anything that I want to achieve in life or my career could be possible. And that anything that I dreamed of could become a reality. And he gave me and my brother the opportunity to do that and the platform to make that happen. And I'll always remember that. You were such an inspirational person and a role model for all of us. And we love you, bro. Doll, you're a real role model, bro. I just wish we had some more time together, but I'm super glad for every moment we shared together. You taught me a lot, and I just want to say I love you, bro. I still lost for words, but I know one thing I can say. You was the realest, man. And can't nobody say otherwise, you know what I'm saying? You was the realest I ever known. And then you're going to continue to keep your legacy going. Only a dog, real hood legend. Show that. I really don't even know what to say right now, because I never thought that I ever had to create a short mission like this. But Dolph, I appreciate you for being a good big brother, a great friend who always gave me good positive advice. Long live Dolph, paper by Frank, King of Memphis. Hey, what Dolph meant to me. A role model, legend, king. Man, I'm just, I'm just grateful and blessed to even be able to call you my big brother, man. Long live Dolph. We love you, man. I could just tell through his lyrics that he was the person that I met and that he stood on business. And that he, he stand on values and families and morals. So young Dolph will be greatly missed. And his time here was greatly appreciated. Hey, the drama. Hey, I watch you here since Paper Out Campaign. I can go be anything I can want to be. Come from Kent State. Hey, long live you, bro. King Dolph. I just had to talk with you, right? Before you had left in London. You know, I love you, bro. And my mama. 
We going up. Really, bro. We up. So hard. When remembering Dolph, I want to think about how hard he worked. How he was always loyal to the people around him. He's a good father, a good friend, and he did it his way. He showed us all we could do it our way. So, um, you know, nothing but love could be very missed. Young Dolph, this your friend, this your barber, John, man. Long live Dolph, man. I love you, bro. Flipper, thank you. You created an opportunity. For all the six years that I was tour managed, you always told me thank you. And that was before I could tell you thank you. So here's my chance. Thank you for everything, bro. Hey, uh-huh. I miss you, my dog. You know what I'm saying? Every time we seen each other, you was kissing. I turn right around. Dissolve. I'm just glad for the time I got to spend with you and to be a part of your life, a part of your story. I just want to salute my brother, Young Dolph. I appreciate everything you've done for me. Bring me into the family. I love you, and your legacy will live on, and we're going to turn up for you. Love, my brother. DJ, 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 two, three. So I sent that to law school. Keep, keep it real with your dog no matter what. Free. Same decline, she love you, she'll set you up. Free. Out here in these streets, it ain't no such thing as love. Free. The only thing I trust is this Danny Slug. Free. Drive my Lambo like a Chevy on some rich. You, you can't talk to my girl, she or the rich. Told the teacher I was gonna be on the rich list. Told you black, black, black. Caught a meal on his wrist. Hey, black, black, black. What a bad. I, w- I went and got the bag and now everything lit. I went and got the bag and now everything lit. I went all the way through hell and back to get to this. Yo. Ten toes, stay down. Yo. Real hustle. Yo. Cut a cup of cup of water off, but still love him. Young. Man, take that shit back, nigga, 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 nigga. Welcome to Dolph World. Two chains right here. Salute to the death of bad movement. DJ, two. Well, I, 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 I